Number 23. In an attempt to escape his island, Gilligan builds a raft and sets the sea. The wind shifts a great deal during the day, and he has blown along the following straight lines. 2.5 kilometers, 45 degrees north of west, 4.7 kilometers, 60 degrees south of east, 1.3 kilometers, 25 degrees south of west, 5.1, wow, this is getting nuts, straight east, 1.7 kilometers, 5 degrees east of north, 7.2 kilometers, 55 degrees southwest, and finally, 2.8 kilometers, 10 degrees north of east. What is his final position? All right, so they want to know his final position. Now, uh, it's important to understand the structure of this problem. Basically, what they're giving us is they're giving a, us a whole bunch of uh, vectors, right, that have magnitude um, and direction, and they're asking us for the final position. Now remember, the final position, in other words, they're asking us for the resultant vector. Okay. Now, I can draw a picture, but I'd have to draw it to scale in order to get gain some good insight into where his final position should be. Uh, but what we can do is we can use the analytical method in order to solve for his resultant vector, and it would actually be much easier in this case. So what is the analytical method? Well, it's basically where we sum all of the x and y components of each of the given vectors so that we can obtain the overall summation of the x and y uh, components for the resultant vector. So the component table here is simply this. I got my x and my y components. And let's see how many vectors we have in the problem. First vector is the 250 kilometer one, so I'll call that v1. Right, then the next is the 4.7 kilometers, so that's second vector. The next one after that is 1.3, so that's three vectors. Next one after that is the 510, so that's four. Then 1.7, so that's five, my goodness. Then we got um, 7.2, so that's uh, six. And finally, 2.8 would be seven. Now, if we sum all these things up, we will get our resultant vector down here, okay? So if we add up all the components, we will get our answer. Now, how do we do this? Take each vector individually and draw it out on a coordinate plane. So let's do a couple, and then maybe we'll be able to speed through the rest, okay? So let's say V1, all right, is gonna be my 2.5 uh, kilometer, 45 degrees north of west. So first, draw your coordinate system, y-axis, x-axis, now draw in the vector. It says 45 degrees north of west. So that would be somewhere in this vicinity, right? Here's the west, here's the north, and this would be 45 degrees north of west. Okay, great. And it has the following magnitude of 2.5. I'm going to leave out the last zero just for um, space sake. All right, but you have to include it for significant figure sake. So I got 2.5, that's the magnitude of, of um, that vector. Now what we have to do is we have to now solve for the components of this, right? So we gotta solve for the x component, which I just drew in. I'll label that negative x because it is in the negative x direction. And then the y component, right? And that would be a positive y component over here because it is in the positive y direction. So let's first work with solving for our x component. If I wanna solve for my x component, and I know the hypotenuse of this triangle, I know the angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, that means I would use cosine, right? So cosine of theta would equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So now we would have cosine of 45 is equal to the negative x value over um, 2.5, right? So negative x is equal to, and it's very important that you have the negative in there, um, otherwise when you, sum everything up in the end, the answer is definitely going to be wrong. So you got to take uh, the, when you calculate the components, you have to make sure you're taking into account positive x or negative x, positive y or negative y. So cosine of 45 times 2.5, we get a value of about uh, one point, and I'm going to do uh, three sig figs just because remember I cut off the extra zero there at the, uh, um, in terms of the um, uh, magnitude of that vector. So 1.77 and then just move the negative sign over. So this is the x component of V1. So in the my table now, I'm gonna put in the x component negative 1.77. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at how to solve for the y. Here's the y component. 
I know the hypotenuse of this triangle, I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side that's opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to be using a sine function. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So now sine of 45 is equal to y over 45, excuse me, <laughs> sine of 2.5. And then y should simply be now, let's just calculate it out, right? So sine of 45 times 2.5. And it comes out to be the exact same, which it should, because the sine of 45 is the same as cosine of 45. So we got 1.77, and that's positive. So now, in your component table under y1, place the value of 1.77. Great, so we're done with the first vector. Now let's move on to the second vector. Okay, the second vector here, so let me just label this one, and now the second vector is right here. Let me make that a little neater. The second vector will be right here, the 2.70. Okay, so draw your axes. Actually, first let me label. Uh, we're gonna do V2 over here. So let's draw our um, axes. So here we go. Y-axis, whoops, Y-axis, X-axis. Now let's draw in. It says that this vector is gonna be 60 degrees south of east. Okay, so here's south, here's east, and we have to be 60 degrees south of east. So it looks like it's gonna be somewhere in here where this angle is 60 degrees south of east. Great. What's the magnitude of that vector? So the magnitude is 4.70, 4.70. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now simply find the components, right? So I'm gonna make a triangle out of this. Now it's important, you might be thinking, well, how do I make the triangle? Couldn't I make it two different ways here? Couldn't I make the triangle this way? Or couldn't I make it uh, this way? And the answer is yes, right? You could do either way. Um, I'm actually gonna to choose to make the triangle that includes the angle, just because then it saves me a step I don't then have to find this angle in here. But that would be pretty simple, right? Because the, the total angle in here would be 90, and if this is 60, that means this angle in here must be 30. But I'm just gonna save myself an extra step. Um, but you could totally do it that way if you liked. Doesn't matter. Just make sure you use the right trigonometric functions. So here's my x, and it's positive because it's in the positive x direction. And now here's my y. All right, and that's going to be negative y because it is in the negative y direction. Now, let's go about solving each of these components. So first, let's take a look at the x component. I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 60 would be equal to now the x value over 4.70. And now my x value simply becomes cosine of 60 times 4.7, 2.35, 2 great. So that takes care of that. So in your component table, go to V2, plug in the value of 2.35, great. Now let's take a look at calculating the y vector. I know the hypotenuse, I also know the angle, and I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle, therefore I'm going to use sine. So I got sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 60 is equal to the negative y value over 4.70. So negative y will equal do sine of 60 times 4.7. And we get a value of 4.07, 4.07. And remember, just bring the negative sign on over. So negative 4.07 now. So go to your table under the Y component, plug in negative 4.07. Cool, so V2 is done. Guess what we're gonna do next? We're gonna do V3, all right? So what I'll do is I'll do one more, um, show you all the steps, and then I'm gonna work the rest, but I'm gonna do it a little faster if that's all right with you guys. Let's now take a look at uh, V3. So it says that the kilometer value is 1.3 at an angle of 25 degrees south of west, right? South of west. So what does that mean? So let's locate where uh, west is. Here's south. So now it says 25 degrees south of west. So let's draw in the line that represents a value of 25 degrees south of west. And there it is, okay? Now the, the value of this vector is 1.70.
And now all I have to do is make my triangle, right? So here's the triangle. I'm going to include the angle in that triangle. So there's one side, right? So that's going to be my X value. Remember it's negative. And then here's my Y value. Right? Now remember that's also negative because it's in the negative direction. Now let's solve for each. Okay. So let's now do, um, so here let's do for X first. Okay. I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore I'm going to use cosine. So we have cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine of 25 is gonna equal the negative x value over 1.70. Negative x will equal now cosine of 25, uh, cosine of 25 times 1.7, No, wait, what am I talking about? One point, how did I get 1.7, guys? It's 1.3, right? Look back to the problem. Sorry about that, made a silly mistake here. Go back to here, This is that's just why it took me a second, because it didn't sound right. So it's 1.3, all right? So let me just erase this over here. All right, so this should really be 1.3, zero. Sorry about that. And uh, let me just erase this. And unfortunately, in, on long problems like this, that's where you'll make a mistake. All right, it's the silly mistakes that hurt. But I'm always constantly checking my numbers back and forth just to make sure, meaning I'm going back to the problem, looking at the numbers, making sure I'm putting them in right. Uh, because you want to minimize the silly mistakes. Right? That might be the difference between the A and the B. All right. So cosine of 25 times 1.3. So this becomes 1.18. 1.18. And now x will equal negative 1.18. Okay, cool. So that's the x value for vector 3. So go to the table and plug that in. So we got negative 1.18. Wunderbar. Now let's calculate the y. I know the hypotenuse. I know the angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. And I'm going to put it up here. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of my 25 degrees will equal the negative y value over 1.30. So negative y is going to equal, so we have sine of 25, oops, sine of 25 times 1.3. And we get a y value of neg uh, 0 0.549, and just move the negative sign on over, so 0.549, and that's negative, okay. Great, plug that into your table now. 0 0.549 and it's negative. All right, so now let's look at um, the rest. All right, I'm gonna draw the coordinates because I, I have to see it out visually. I can't actually just do this all in my head. So uh, let's do them in the upper uh, left-hand corner over here. So I'm gonna do now for, I'm on V4. So V4 will be the 5.1. All right, so just draw a coordinate system. Do this relatively quickly. Let's locate, it says straight east, so that's great. So straight east would just be a vector in this direction, and it says that it has a value of 5.10. Right, so let me plug that in, 5.10 kilometers. There's only an x component, it's only in the positive x direction, so when I go to my table, I'm going to plug in 5.10 for x, and there's 0y. Let me just change the color there so it looks nice and consistent. Okay, great. That was V4. Now let's go to uh, V5. So I'll do that right beneath V5. So let's draw another little coordinate system. And now for V5, let me label that. That should be the 1.7 now. That's how where I got confused before. I guess I just looked at the wrong number. So that's uh, number five and it says five degrees east of north. Okay, so when I draw that in, I have to be east of north. So five degrees, so over here. So this angle in here is five degrees. Okay, I know the magnitude of it, it's 1.70. And now I'm gonna make my triangle. The only thing though here is since I know an angle relative to now the Y axis, if you've noticed a pattern before, every time I solve for X, I use cosine. Every time I solve for Y, I use sine. But that's only because I was finding the angle relative to the x-axis. Now I'm finding an angle relative to the y-axis. So therefore, 
Don't memorize that pattern. Understand why you're using cosine and sine, because in this particular case, I'm going to use sine to solve for x and cosine to solve for y. So try not to memorize too much. Understand. It's a lot better. So there we go. All right, so now I know that this is, let me just plug in. The, so this is going to be y and this is going to be x. All right, so now I'm just going to do the calculations. So I'm going to be using sine to solve for that x side. So it's going to be <clears throat> sine of 5 times 1.7. So I get my x value over here for vector 5. I'm just going to plug it in the table. It's going to be 0 0.148. Oops, I didn't change. 0 0.148. And for y here, <clears throat> I'm going to use a value. I got to use cosine now. Cosine of 5 times 1.7. So it becomes 1.69. So then now 1.69. Okay, great. Now vector six. Let's draw a set of axes. Here's vector six now. This is a nice long problem, but it's not hard. It's just long, all right? So uh, let's take number six now. So in terms of number six, this is the 7.2 kilometer one, 55 degrees south of west. So how do we represent south of west? Just like this. Okay, where the angle is 55 degrees south of west. The magnitude of that um, vector was 7.2. All right, and now I'm going to draw in my triangle that, to include that given angle. So let me just straighten that out a little bit. So there's my x. Now remember that's negative x. All right, and here's my y now. Well, that's not the best. It's not going to connect perfectly, but you guys get the picture. That's going to be my negative y. And I'm going to use uh, cosine to solve for x and sine to solve for y now because it, it's an angle relative to the x-axis. So let's do that. So we have cosine of 55 times 7.2. And it's going to be a negative value because the x is negative. So it's going to be negative 4.13. And now to solve for... Uh, Actually, I should have just put it, sorry, in a different color. Negative 4.13. Negative 4.13. Great. And now to solve for the y, I'm going to use sine. So sine of 40, 55 times 7.2. And again, that's a negative number because it's in the negative y direction. So negative 5.90, if we consider how to round. Last but not least, my goodness, let's do vector 7. So we've got V7. So we've got a coordinate here and here. And vector um, 7 now is the 2.8 kilometer one, 10 degrees north of east. So 10 degrees north of east. So it looks like it's going to be something in here, right? Where it's 10 degrees north of east. All right. Let's draw in the sides. Here's the X component. That looks like a positive X to me. And a positive Y component straight on up. Great. To solve for the x, I'm going to be using cosine. Don't forget to place in the magnitude, though. So the magnitude of this thing is 2.80. Okay. So now we're going to do cosine of 10 times 2.8. So we get a value, positive that is, of 2.76. So on your table, plug in 2.76. And then now for the y value, we're going to use sine. So sine of a 10 multiplied by 2.8, and we get a value of 0 0.486, 486. Okay, great. All right, now, I should, now I'll just be able to add everything up. I didn't really make a mistake here with the colors. Remember, I had to use kind of the opposite function, so that's just why I changed the color there. But now all I got to do to find these two numbers, I just got to add everything up in the column. So let's find the x. All right, so negative 1.77 plus 2.35, plus negative 1.18, right, plus 5.1, plus 0.148, minus 4.13, plus 2.76. Okay, and this answer comes out to be now positive, and I'll just put them all in red here. So it comes out to be a positive 3.1. 
0.28, and that's in kilometers. Okay, great. Now, and I'm just making sure I, all the units were in kilometers in the problem. Yeah, and they were. Okay, so that works. And now, just add up all the Ys. So now we got 1.77 minus 4.07 minus 0.549. Well, plus zero is just zero, plus 1.69, minus 5.9, plus 0.48. I think that's a six. Can't even read my, read my own handwriting. It is. Okay, sorry about that. So we get a negative now. This works out to be negative 6.57. So these are the components, the X and Y components of the resultant vector. Okay, so now we can finally solve for it, all right? So let me just draw a quick picture, a quick coordinate system, and just graph what this thing should look like, all right? So I'll draw my coordinates right here at the bottom, all right? So what I have to do is I have to go out. Um, that's a little, it's a little tight in there. I don't have too much more space, but all right, we'll just make it work. So here... Uh, I would go out 3.8 units to the in the positive x direction. All right, so this is 3.8, excuse me, 3.28. And then I would have to go down, right? Uh, then I would have to go down negative uh, 6.57. Now, this obviously will not be to scale, right? But I'm going to go down. Uh, this value will be 6.57. You can write the negative in there to remind yourself, but you don't have to because you're drawing it in the negative y direction. And my resultant vector then will be simply connect the start to the end, this black line right there, okay? So this is my resultant vector. So I could do Pythagorean's theorem now to solve for it, right? I know the two sides and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, or you can go to the upper right-hand side and you can use this simple formula. All right, you don't even have to draw a picture necessarily, but I want you to see it intuitively. So now to solve for my resultant vector, I simply find the square root of the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared. So my resultant vector here would be equal to the square root of 3.28 squared, because that was the sum of all the x components of all the other vectors plus negative 6.57 squared because that was the sum of all the y's. And now just plug it in. So we get square root of 3.28 squared plus, right, um, negative 6.57 squared. So the answer comes out to be 7.34. So 7.34 kilometers. That is the resultant vector. That is the magnitude. That is the, that is the uh, magnitude of that uh, resultant vector. Now we just have to solve for the angle. What angle am I looking for? We'll go back to the little picture I drew here at the bottom. I'm going to draw in the angle in black, this angle right in there. Okay, that angle. That's going to be the angle I'm looking for. To solve for that, I could use tangent, right? I know the opposite side. I know the adjacent side, so I can do tangent. Okay. I can also use my formula over here that says the tangent of the angle should be uh, y over x. All right, doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do it over here on the right-hand side. Continue on over. So I'm going to say tangent of theta will equal the sum of all the y's over the sum of all the x's, the absolute values. So now tangent, tan of theta, will equal um, 6.57. And they're, just make them all positive, 3.28. And theta now will be, so I'm going to do all the math at once. So just do 6.57 divided by 3.28, and then do second tan of that value. So basically, so the second tan of 2 point, because we got to make sure we have sig figs, 2.06. And the answer comes out to 64.1 degrees, and that sounds reasonable, 64.1 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle, but now what's the measure of it relative to uh, the, me the axis that I'm measuring it off of? So this angle in here in the picture is being measured off of the east axis, right? And it's basically south of east. So that's how I'm going to frame my answer. So let me write the final answer all the way at the top of the page underneath college physics. All right, so the resultant vector would be this. The resultant vector is 7.34 kilometers 
at 64.1 degrees south of east. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Now, not a hard problem. Literally, we've done a whole bunch of problems like this, but we were dealing with two vectors, maybe three vectors. This time they gave us seven. Who cares? It's not harder. It's just, like I said, it's just going to take more time. All right. But if you can do a problem like this, you should have no problem with any vectors. All right. So congratulate yourselves if you have followed through on this video, if you've uh, completed it. And um, again, I appreciate you guys very much. Well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, please do subscribe. It would definitely help our channel out tremendously. It would allow us to reach more people and help more students like yourself. So thank you again. Until next time.